Last season, we were promoted as champions to the top flight of Polish football in our first season with Monte Lublin. This year, we're in the top flight and we're hoping to have a good time because of this small problem. We are expected to finish bottom of the table with 1,000 to 1 odds where everyone else has got at least some decent odds. So I'm fearing for the worst that this could just be a one-off season in the top flight. I'm hoping that isn't the case. We also have the worst sponsorship income as well. So even if we were to try and fight them financially, we quite frankly couldn't right now. Even if our owner is apparently a millionaire. Financially though, we're actually looking okay. And I've tried to get some bits and pieces in and bring some upgrades in to the squad right now. But as things stand, I haven't really tried in the first season. I will try and get the junior coaching and youth recruitment improved though. We've also got some young talent who could be coming through to the first team sooner or later. Igor Bartnik is the person that is the most exciting given he's a young goalkeeper with a lot of potential and is only 18. Last season we also lost two more backroom staff before the end of the season. Alessio Di Petrelli actually left us to become a manager of Renete who I believe survived. Yes, they survived, so our former second team manager got his side to survival. Congratulations to him for keeping his side up in the Italian third tier. The fact he won a third of his games and only lost three times tells you the entire story how well he did there. We also brought in his replacement in Quebec, and it's also easy to see that he's not as good as Alessio, so it's a downgrade, but it was the best option I had at the time. But since we last met, we've also brought in a new fitness coach in Mr. Murato, and I think he's quite good. I also realised I literally got a comment telling me how to pronounce some of the posts they said I'm still getting it wrong. I just realised I apologise in advance for that. But then we got rid of his Michel Zacco, and you can see why he was replaced, quite frankly, can't you? The board only wants us to attempt to avoid relegation from the top flight and to reach the Polish Cup proper, so that could be a challenge. And in other news, we are studying for our natural aid license and our attributes have got quite nicely since we last met. So, as far as I'm concerned, we're doing quite well here. Even if we're known for preferring a possession-based style of play, wanting high tempo pressing game and being a strict disciplinarian. So, we've actually gotten to the winter break. And at a certain point, I want to show you it's because something's happened and I think it's quite good. Well, things have happened and if you look at our first couple of games in charge of the season... Things didn't get off to the best of starts. We didn't win in our first two matches. We lost both of them. We then drew our next game against Walter Poznan before we picked up our first win of the season. So, we're back. It's the 28th of December. Later than usual because something happened. But we haven't had the best of starts. We lost three of the first five matches in charge against some teams we should be beating as well in, in the form of Book bet, but we did draw against Walter Poznan and we did beat Gagliona in a game we were hoping we could win. So we did lose the next game against a team that we should be fighting for the relegation position, so that's not ideal. But we did win our next game afterwards, so at least we got that going for ourselves. And we only beat Gordic by a goal to nil in the cup, so it's not ideal. Then we had some of the most difficult draws in the form of Leke Rosso and Rakov before we lost the next two games anyway. And yeah, picking up just one point in the next four matches is not ideal. And if I recall correctly, it's about 10 games in. Yes, 10 games in. We were in the relegation zone after 10 matches. And I started to think, oh, this is not going our way, is it? So when we picked up three wins out of four in the league in October and for a friendly in to try and get our morale up, to try and get the cohesion up, I was excited because it suddenly told me that we can beat some big teams. Especially when we're beating Lesia Gazan. So that's a team. That's the biggest win we've had so far away from home there. We then went to the Lesia Poznan and drew 0-0. And the fact we could draw 0-0 against them is great. We did lose the next game 3-2. That's important because of the reason I was showing the bit. But we then won in the third round of the Polish Cup. So we've actually won... Every game in the Polish Cup this year. So that's one thing we've done already. But then we go through to the month of November, December. And you realise we didn't drop all three points. We didn't lose a single game in these games. And we beat the teams that were beating us early in the year. So the two teams that beat us the first two games of the year, we beat them 
five two and three nil. And then Water Poznan we beat two nil before we actually got held to a one all draw by the team we beat for our first win of the league campaign. And that was the last game we had in the league. And it was very, very special because of this. Somehow, despite all odds, we are in 10th place with 7 wins, 7 draws and 7 defeats. We are consistently average, but we are comfortably 13 points clear of the relegation zone. And in fact, only being 8 points away from the top 4 is probably the miracle of the season. So, I don't think we are going to go and fight for European football. I think top half is ultimately the best I think we can aim for. But I'd like to think that we have already given ourselves a big enough boost that we will not be relegated this year. And the fact that our first game back from the winter break is against a team that's bottom of the table is also important because it means we could just build the gap even more. And the ultimate goal is to get to 40 plus points. We're only 12 points away from that. So we legitimately could survive this year. And I'm delighted that's the case. And we've also been given a brand new contract, which we had signed. It expires in 2026. I was tempted to make it a three year deal, but I didn't want to push my luck. And yeah, they were happy with keeping me alive and keeping me around for another year or two. And the deal was quite nice. It takes me for a few things, but the offer was reasonable. I didn't ask for anything too significant. And financially, we're looking even better, to be fair, as well. We've actually made up 200,000 since we last met. And it's even better because it tells me that we can do bits and pieces and be able to push more and more. And we've also improved the facilities. We actually got the junior coaching and youth recruitment upgrades that I was looking for. So we're looking good there as well. I also tried to push for a training facilities upgrade, but they said that we didn't have the financial muscle for it right now. So I think that's the thing for next season. But we've also sold a player that was kind of important. And this is why I thought we should bring this up now, because it's important to say the least. We sold this guy, you know, potentially the best player in the squad. Yeah, I sold him. The reason I did is because he was getting consistently upset with me because I fined him a few times in the early stages of my time at the club and he was consistently getting upset with the fact I was fining him and I promised not to fine him. I forgot I promised this and I fined him by accident and then he came back to me and he said, I, I don't, I don't want to be here. I've lost trust in you. So I thought, you know what? I'll put you on the market and sell you. And I sold him for 51 grand. Which sounds like a lot of wasted potential money, but I was just annoyed, you know? Because I generally think we could have done more. But he was upset, he was causing problems, he was never doing well in training. He, he just was a consistent pain in the backside, and I thought, you know what? I don't care for this. You could clear off, you can go. I could survive without you. And given that we're in 10th, I think I've been proven right with that, so that's good to know. The question now is, what more could we do? Oh, we also got some more people in as well. And we also lost another person to a team, uh, to be a manager. Arthur Bozek is the pers latest person to leave us to become a manager. Kawika is the team that's taken him. And given that they were not doing so well when he took over, I don't think he's not, play he's not played a game with them so far. But the fact that they are currently in ninth, I think they lost a the manager to a bigger team. Yes, Marcin Pluska left then to become the PS manager, who, if you remember correctly, is in the relegation fight, so he joined them. I think he did okay in his first couple of matches. I mean, yeah, seven games, three wins, three draws, one defeat. He's done quite well since he's taken over. He's also conceded just four goals and scored six times. So, yeah, his team's not scoring a lot, but they're definitely causing problems, and I am not looking forward to facing him when he's the, their manager right now. He's actually done quite a good job. But since we lost players and um, backroom staff members, I thought I'd bring more in. We got a new head of performance analysis though, and David is quite good. So I think he's not the best, but he's not bad either. And given how much we're paying him, I think that's quite a good deal for us, quite frankly, long term. So yes, £130 a week is not terrible at all, is it? We also brought in Adam Amila, and he's a scout. I don't really need scouts, but I brought him in anyway, because why not? I was recommended I bring him in, so I did. We also brought in Carl Wilsick as the under-19s coach to replace the guy that left us for another job. He's done okay. Um, he's quite decent, to be honest with you. I think he might be better than one we just lost, so if anything, it works out. Fairly determined personality as well. Personally, that's quite good to have. We also got a new under-19s assistant manager, which, given we didn't replace anyone, tells me I didn't have one to begin with, and 
yeah, it's just interesting to note we have this guy brought in. Again, he's not amazing, but it gives us someone to help out in the training side of things. So, again, not amazing, but it also just spreads out the rug load down there. So hopefully it'll be good. So another thing to talk about is the fact that our youth intake preview arrived and we're only expecting to have two good players, a defense midfielder and a center midfielder. Apparently nothing else is worth talking about, which is a bit strange to say the least, but as long as I'm getting good players and good positions, I don't mind so much. I would like to get some good wingers at some point though, but that's all I'm going to say in the matter. Oh, we also completed our coaching course and I'll show you what we look like now because we are looking good. We're now studying for the Continental B license. So we've actually completed the National A and the Continental C. And I think that we look quite reasonable, all things considered. Halfway through the year, we pretty much doubled most of our, some of our traits. And it's mad to think that we're this good now. We have Continental C license. We're still only 27. It's looking quite reasonable. What I'm going to do, though, is end this here. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. Where do you think we will finish this year? Do you think top half is realistic? Or do you think we'll have the collapsible collapses in the last 13 games and finish in the bottom three? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this down below. But either way, until next time, bye and well, good night.